once famous for their golden wheat fields and forests rich in game. The lands now known as the Iskander Wilds were once the property of House Vastel, a minor house loyal to House Iskander. In 8342, the Red Fever struck the region without mercy and wiped out the entire Vastel bloodline. Left without a lord, the lands fell into anarchy and were left deserted. Nowadays, they are as beautiful as they are dangerous. What's next? What do we need? Yes. Now would you... Unbelievable. Must be quite a change of scenery. Yes, you could say that. All my life I dreamed of stepping through the portal, and now I did. And it's beautiful. Everything is so... Va oh well. It will take some getting used to, that's for certain. There's something else I wanted to discuss with you. I brought some things from the island that could come in handy on your travels. Weapons, trinkets, all sorts of things I found in the Hibernian ruins over the years. Most of them haven't been used for millennia, but for a little gold I, I could get them back into shape. Just I will. Thank you. 
Tandai, yeah. Tandai to Har. Come to trade? Just what you need. A fair offer. What's next? So, this is your place. Huh. Interesting. I like the architecture. It has grace. You like it? Yes, imagine an orc who isn't all about pikes and spikes. Either way, let me know if you need my knowledge. Will do. Thanks, Kier. Yes, yes? I'm sure I have just what you need. What do we need? 
We'll hold our ground. Let's see. Interesting. Got it. We'll... Understood. Now would you look at that? Hmm. Whatever... We're in for a fight. What's next? You regret this. What do we need? Understood. Don't let down your guard. Will do. Got it. They will fall. Yes. Mm hmm. Understood. You read my mind. Mm hmm. Whatever's necessary. Mm hmm. What's next? Will do. Got it. Understood. Focus. Let's see.
guess. What's next? Tahar, what is it? There's one thing I've been wondering about. After we parted at the hideout. Good question. I guess it all started with the relics, the tomes. You remember? Yes. He was hoping they'd help him to win the war. Exactly. And there was this one moment when he found the fifth tome. You see, there were all those bodies. Enemies, but also many of our people. We had shed so much blood, Tahar. So much blood for our cause. But Asamo, he... And as dramatic as it may sound, that's when I finally understood that we had lost our cause. This wasn't about ideals, about us mages anymore. It was about him. And that's the reason Zane, Helena, and I betrayed him. Come on. Do you really want to tell us you didn't see that before? The tomes were all about power. No, you misunderstand. I knew it was about power. But Asamo always told us that he would use that, and it's not that far off. I mean, can't you imagine? With the power of the tomes, we could have united the world. Even made it a better one. No more persecution of the deviant. No more wars. No more suffering. Maybe. But my father certainly wasn't the one who should lead it. Maybe not. I'll be off. I must say, I am impressed. With Mullendir? Yes. It's quite a sight. I still can't believe what the first... It seems unlikely, yes, but yet it happened. Isgrim, the dwarf, told me about it. He said that the rock illusion shielding the entrance vanished as soon as you spoke the words, and that it did not react to Isgrim himself. Tell me, Tahar, what do you make of that? Maybe I'm connected to this place. But how? I know there is more to you than meets the eye. Something about you is different, although I cannot say what it is. I believe we stand on the verge of a change. Things have happened to her. Things, the extent of which we have not even come close to comprehending. And they have set something in motion. How do you know this? Are you some kind of... A medium. No, quite the opposite. I am an observer. As you have undoubtedly noticed, I lack the, let us call it emotional intensity most people display in their daily lives. That can be a challenge, but it also allows me a unique perspective on the world. And to me, it is evident that 
the war your father started has done more than simply given birth to the purity of light. It was the first pebble in what will soon become an avalanche. You're talking about the Bloodburn? Among other things, yes. But as I said, there is more to it. All this, your journey, your role in what Rondar Lacane believes to be a vision sent by Aenir. It is only the beginning. But let us continue this discussion when I can give you more than vague semi-prophetic statements. All right. We'll talk later. Why? When? Um, when something comes up. I'll go prepare for our next mission now. Understood. Yes. Yes, Corporal? How can I help? Well, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. Why do you want to know? Because I want to know my allies. Huh. I see. In short, my mother sold me. And after an incident, my owner noticed my talents. He started to train me to carry out jobs for him. And when I was 17, he had an accident. I have been an independent assassin ever since. Your mother sold you? Because she needed the coin and already had four children to feed. And as for your first question, where there is demand, there is a market, particularly in a big city like Greyfell. It's not as uncommon as you might believe. You're saying there's a slave market in Greyfell? Slaves, sex, murdering for pleasure. Just imagine every dark desire you can think of, and you know what the Greyfell Bazaar has to offer. I find it interesting that this surprises you. Didn't you serve in the- I only joined shortly before the Mage Wars started, and the Greyfell affairs were the responsibility of the Greyfell Guard. I just didn't know. Well, now you do. I do not agree with the purity of light in most aspects, but they are right when they say there are many sinners in this world. If you believe in the concept of sin, that is. Even if she needed the money, that's despicable. Well, to her credit, she didn't take it lightly. At least as far as I can remember. I was on that doesn't make it better. How do you feel about this? Your mother selling you off? Well, I used to feel strongly about it. Now I've simply accepted it as part of my past. But there are plenty of reasons for that. That's quite the story. Is it? So, who is this man who bought you? I won't talk about that. This chapter of my past is done, and I want it to stay buried. Hmm. To me, that sounds like you're hiding something. I am. But it should be of no relevance to you. So, tell me, Pariah, how did you become the Betrayer's child in the first place? 
It's rare for a child to defy their own father. That's simple. My father was a monster, and I had to stop him. A monster? Interesting. What makes you call him that? He was power hungry. He said his war was about protecting the mages, but it wasn't. All he cared about was becoming more powerful. Huh. I, either way, is there anything else you need? Goodbye. How are you holding up? Fine, I guess. Thanks for asking. You know, Corporal, I've been meaning to ask you something. Yes? Well, not knowing your mother and all that shit your father put you through. Do you ever feel lost? Why do you want to know? Oh, I'm just wondering, I guess. So, what's your answer? Not really. I've never been too concerned with the past. <laughs> I wish I could say the same. You know, I haven't told you that yet, but actually our pasts aren't so different. Save for the fact that my father didn't try to conquer the world, at least not that I know. How are our pasts alike, then? Simply put, I also didn't know my mother. And my father was a bastard if there ever was one. What happened to your mother? She died giving birth to me. I'm sorry. It's all right. As I said, I never knew her. I take it you and your father aren't on good terms, then? You are of great wisdom, Tahar. No, we were not. I was and still am the only heir of the family. And if there's anything my father ever cared about, it was prestige. You see, 
It might not be obvious, but I'm actually of noble blood. Pure blood, as Finn and Mere elves call it. <laughs> Nothing impressive, small nobility. You know, similar to the kind of Nortander nobility that's always around at royal festivities, licking everyone's boots so that they just don't forget about them. There's nobility in Finn and Mir? Oh, yes, there is. They don't call it that, but essentially Finn and Mir is an aristocracy. How so? Well, as you might know, elven culture heavily revolves around the White Tree, a gift from their god. Simply put, the tree is revered and guarded by a group of mages, uh, of seers, called the Council. They're the rulers of our country, six women and six men. Now, According to the ancient lore, when a seer dies, his or her successor is chosen by the council. However, it has become custom that a seer should be replaced by someone from his bloodline. Someone pure, as they call it. Which means they make sure that the power stays within the right family. Indeed. And even though elven families in themselves are small, if you count all the cousins, aunts and uncles, the members of just one council family could populate a whole township. In other words, the closer your blood ties with the Council, the closer you are to the White Tree. And thus, the higher your step. Hmm. So I assume your father put you under a lot of pressure. Yeah, that's one way to put it. I barely had a childhood. It was all stern-faced teachers instead, trying to feed me language, history, math, and magic from the day I could speak. And I can't even remember all those festivities and religious ceremonies I had to attend. <laughs> it was as if I learned the meaning of the word small talk before I learned how to ask for my mother's tea. Not that she would have been around to listen. How about Fred? Oh, that's another topic. I was allowed to go out and play as long as it was with the right people, which was my choice, really. One of the few I made in those years. I preferred to stay on my own. How come? I don't know. See, I've always felt a bit ahead of others. As you know, we think in other dimensions than you do. Our lives are a lot longer. What that means is that an elf who has seen 20 winters is still considered and looks like a child, thus behaves as such. I just never felt at home with most people, especially around my age, and that feeling never changed. What was your father hoping to gain from this? Isn't it obvious? He wanted to marry me off, and thus expand our petty little family's prestige. If he simply wanted to arrange a marriage for you, then why teach you magic? When these things happen in Nortander, it's usually more about... How shall I put it? The looks? And the ancestry, yes. Well... These things play a big role in Finn and Mir, too, but to be considered a good match, education and magical talent are just as important. For a priest, let alone a pure blood, to be seen with an uneducated, non-gifted street elf is frowned upon, not to say forbidden. Also, from what I've learned, it's mostly young women and girls who get married off in Nortander, isn't it? Yes. Well, this isn't the case in Finn and Mir. If the head of a family decides to do so, a young boy or a young man may have the same fate as the one I just escaped by a hair's breadth.
This is a topic you could fill books with. Probably not for now. But it never came to that. Almost. Hmm, I see. What was your fault? Isn't it obvious? He wanted to marry me off, and thus expand our petty little family's prestige. Hmm, I see. Where is your father now? Dead as a doornail. He got assassinated some years before I was allowed into the priesthood. Assassinated? What happened? He got mistaken for someone else. But it doesn't really matter. Let's not talk about it. Sounds like he got what he deserved. I don't believe people get what they deserve. They get whatever life or the Guardians bother to give them. Murderers live to be a hundred. Children die in the birth beds. Ultimately, the biggest fallacy is that we like to believe that there's someone who gives a damn. We're on our own, and we have to make the best out of whatever life throws at us. I did. And even though not all worked out as I had planned, I'm here. And I'm free. But the Guardians are real. I never said that they weren't. But tell me one thing. Why is there cruelty when there's Shanna? Why is there injustice when there's Arian? Why do children die when there's Ellen? There are two explanations. Number one, the Guardians are far less powerful than we think. Number two, they just don't give a damn. Or maybe their hands are tied. The Harbinger said they've been put to sleep to prepare for Aeonir's return. Well, then they've been asleep for quite some time now. Whatever the reason, though, it amounts to the same. The gods aren't the answer. <laughs> yeah, every once in a while there's the token miracle healing, 
The chances of your prayers... So you can either sit on your buttocks hoping that some god will take pity, or you can take your fate into your own hands. But you still feel lost sometimes. Yeah, I do. But I'm working anyway. We digressed quite a bit, didn't we? Sorry, my fault. I'll see you around, Tahar. And thanks for listening. Corporal? Need anything? Goodbye. Yes. Huh? How did you become a shape? I was chosen. And how does that work? Complicated. Are you sure you want to hear the whole story? Time isn't exactly on our side. It isn't, but the more I know about your abilities, the better. You're fighting for me, after all. We're not fighting for you, Tahar. We're fighting alongside each other. That's a big difference. Alongside, then. Good. Let's make it short, then. Shapeshifting is a gift of Zark, one that only the best of his shamans are granted. And how does one become a shape? He has to be chosen by a tribe's chieftain. You see, magical talent is a lot rarer among all. In my tribe, there was only me and Rain. We both discovered our talent by chance. I, when I was nine, everybody was asleep. Even the damn fool that had been tasked to stand guard. When I woke up, the entire room was in flames. So it was your magic that woke you? No. I needed to take- Huh. <laughs> Makes sense. What happened then? I panicked and started screaming, as every child would have. However, the only thing that did was make me inhale the fumes even quicker. My vision- When I woke up again, I was on a bed of hay in the village shaman's tent, and everybody was staring at me. <laughs> I asked what happened and they told me. Just when I had lost consciousness, it had started to rain. Not just a little. It was a f with not even a minute all the tents in the village had been flooded. The fire wasn't extinguished right away, but was quickly put out by the other orcs that had been awoken by the storm. How did they know it was you? It could have been a coincidence. Mm, an unlikely one, yes. But you're right. According to my brothers, I had an orange shimmer in my eyes. 
and was muttering strange words when they took me to- She told me that was a clear sign that I was gifted, and that I had fire in my blood, as my tribe likes to say. All of a sudden, I was my cow's pride. It was strange, not just for me, but also for my kin. How did your family take- Well, they were proud. But they also were- For example, my father stopped taking me out on the hunt because he was afraid that something might happen. Which is ridiculous. Shame on- Also, my siblings became... Uh, withdrawn. Jealousy, of course, but... Also estrangement. All of a sudden, their baby brother had become this strange being, which had apparently been bitten by Zarek himself. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, don't be dramatic. There's worse fates than being the one gifted orc among thousands. Who trained you? Yes, but only about her craft. Primitive ghost callings, alchemy, medicine. I learned my magic from an elder who lived in a tiny shack a 15 mile mart from our village. I woke up every day before dawn, walked for two hours, served him, and received my lessons, and then returned to my cow shortly before midnight. It was hard, yes, but it was insightful. Those long walks in the darkness, the solitude at the foot of the mountain where his shack was, they shaped me. Interesting. And who was this Rain you mentioned earlier? Did I? Well, that's complicated. I don't want- <laughs> All right. Regarding this Rain you told me of- No, Tahar. Accept it. Huh? I'll be off. To this day, the Shaper's magical and technological prowess remains unrivaled. One thing is clear. None of their marvels would have been possible without an incredible amount of...